Hello, and welcome to a presentation on research data from the Collaborative Research Center for American Indian Health. My name is Susan Pumala, and I direct the Methodology Corps for the Center. Today, we're going to talk about research data, and to do that, we have three different objectives. Our first objective is going to be to define research data. Our second objective will be to talk a little bit about what makes research data different from data collected for other purposes. And finally, we'll talk a little bit about what you can do with research data. Throughout the presentation, I'm going to use an example of one of my studies to give more concrete details on what constitutes research data. In the study that I'll be discussing is emergency department use and care in American Indian children. And that study is funded as part of the Collaborative Research Center for American Indian Health. So the first thing that we want to do in this presentation is to define research data. Overall, we could just define research data as any data used for research purposes. That definition might not be all that helpful because what it doesn't provide is a definition of research. And again, the most broad definition of research that I could find was research is a structured process that answers a question. So if you put those very broad definitions together, you come up with the definition that research data is information collected during a structured process that answers a question. So by your definition, research data really revolves around the questions that you want to answer in the context of a research study. For my emergency room study, there were a couple of kind of driving questions that we wanted to answer. The first one was about how American Indian children use the emergency room and whether or not that was different from children from other racial or ethnic groups. The second question for the study was looking at the care received in emergency room for American Indian children and whether or not that was different again from other racial or ethnic groups. So the data that we collect to try to answer these questions, that's going to be our research data. One of the things that I wanted to talk about was the different types of research data. So there's two um, main types for research data. The first type of data is primary data. So that's data that does not exist prior to your research study. So that's data that you have to go out and collect yourself. The second main type of data is secondary data. And that's data that already exists for another reason, but data that you can repurpose for your specific research study. So to give you some examples of the different types of data, we'll start with primary data. So again, primary data are collected within the context of your research study. So they're data that you are getting yourself to answer your research questions. So some of the ways you might get data are you might ask people. So you might have a questionnaire or a survey. Um, another way to ask people questions is to do interviews with them. And so the audio tapes that you would create when you interview somebody, that would turn into research data as well. As part of your research study, you might be interested in specific measurements from people. So you might actually measure their height or their weight. And another source of data um, would be specimens or samples. So if you're collecting something like a, a hair sample or a saliva sample, something like that, specifically to answer your research question, then that would be primary research data. As I mentioned before, secondary data is data that already exists in some form, but without a specific research purpose. One of the main things that is used for secondary data are medical records. Um, and you think about it, medical records are a really good source of data. So you might have some of the measurements already. Um, people have height and weight in their medical records. They might have measurements from some specific test, um, like a cholesterol measurement. Um, they might also have information on disease. And so those are all things that you don't have to ask anybody. You can collect because they already exist in the medical records. Other sources for secondary data could be educational data, so you might collect information on test scores from students, um, or you could use something like the census data. So the census data has information on um, things like population density, uh, income, and things like that that you might be able to repurpose for your research study. In the emergency room study, we have a lot of different modes for gathering information. So we have primary data, 
So we have survey responses, we have audio tapes of focus groups, and we have transcriptions of audio tapes. We also have secondary data because we also collected data from medical records of people who visit the emergency room. So you can see it's usually a combination of the two types of data that are involved in a research study. But it's still data that you are collecting um, or assembling from other sources that answers your main questions of interest. So next we want to talk about what makes research data different from other sources of data. And really the main thing that makes research data different is the specific set of rules and regulations associated with that data. Now that's not to say data collected for other purposes doesn't have any rules and regulations because it certainly does. Um, data from medical records are protected um, by different rules and regulations. Data from um, your educational record are protected by rules and regulations. But for research data, it has its own specific set of rules and regulations that you have to follow. So the basic set of rules and regulations for research data comes in a couple of different packages. The first one is if your data involves human subjects. For human subjects, um, when you're doing research, you want to just make sure that you protect your individual study subjects. And to do that, um, usually you get approval from an institutional or research review board. So this is an independent body that kind of reviews your research and what you're doing and makes sure that it follows ethical principles. Some of the um, specifics that you might need to do for human subjects is to have an informed consent document. So if you're going to use somebody to participate in a research study, they need to know about the research um, and what their role is in that research. And then if you're using something like medical records, since they have their own set of rules and regulations, you will need an authorization to do that. So um, for medical records, it's a Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act authorization. Other rules and regulations vary by what specific type of human subjects research you're doing. Um, and so it's usually good just to start with an institutional or research review board um, to start that process of what regulations you need to follow. Now, if your study doesn't involve humans, but if it involves animals, then it's a different process. Um, and you would have to get approval by an institutional animal care and use committee. And again, that committee is to make sure that the animals are treated humanely during the research project. So in the emergency room study, we had to go um, the human subjects route. So we have approval at three separate IRBs um, to do the research at our different sites. And then because we were collecting data in a lot of different ways, we have separate consents and kind of a separate um, process that we went through uh, with our IRBs for each part of the project. So the last thing I wanted to talk about is what you can do with your research data. And the first thing that you really ought to do with your research data is share your results. So if you're working with a community on your study, you want to share those results with your community and you also want to share your results with the scientific community. Then, once you're finished sharing your results from your research study, there's also an opportunity to do more research on your data. Now, you do need to be careful when you do more research on your data because you need to be consistent with the original consent form and the IRB approval. So if you're not going to seek uh, another consent, and a different IRB approval, you need to make sure that you're in line with you, what you originally set out to do. Um, the second thing that you can do with your research is to use that as preliminary data for a new research project. So it's possible that you found something very exciting, um, perhaps a new method or an intervention that worked really well. And so you want to use that um, to do more research um, to see if you can make a bigger impact um, with your research overall. So in the emergency room study, we have lots of plans for our research data. Uh, and the first one is to share that research data. So we have um, plan to do community meetings and stakeholders meetings uh, to make sure that that data goes back to the communities that have been working with us on the project. We're also using the data for presentations at conferences and manuscripts to get that data out to the scientific community. And then we also have plans to use the research data itself. 
what we're going to do with that is hopefully um, we'll find interventions that we'll be able to develop in our study sites and then be able to test those interventions to see if they're effective. Once we complete those, um, we'll use that data for future studies um, if we find a really great intervention that really helps improve care in emergency departments. We'll want to share that and try to implement it on a bigger scale. So I hope you enjoyed today's presentation um, and I hope that you have gotten some idea about what research data is, why it's different from other data, and what you can do with it um, once you have the data from a research study. So thank you so much for your participation today and if you have questions or would like further information please contact me at info at Thank you so much.